Hi, it's Dwyer, keeping it free.blogspot.com, richarddwyer.com, and for sports bettors, gamblersadvisory.com. Today is Thursday, October the 24th, 2019. Let's talk about Natalie Wood's death. Let's revisit that death in light of an excellent show on HLN Network, Dead Wives Club, Episode 1, where they actually interview people like the boat's operator, Dennis Deverne. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say that I made an earlier video on Natalie Wood's death. That video is under a Creative Commons license. In other words, if you're someone who likes to take from other videos and creating your own documentary or video here on YouTube or elsewhere, you already have my permission. You don't have to email me to ask. You already have my permission to use portions of my videos um, with attribution. Okay, so understand, you can reuse, you can recycle my videos. I don't have a problem with it. I believe the goal here is really to discuss what happened, to determine whether or not there's a crime, right? I'm not one of these people who's going to insist on enforcing copyright rights. Understand, I've expressly put this video under a Creative Commons license, as I have most of the videos I've placed here online. I believe a portion of a video I made here online found its way into the Adnan Saeed HBO show, great. Let's discuss the subject matter. Let's come to our conclusions. We don't have to necessarily agree, but let's at least share our passion for investigating true crime. Now, some of you have written me. Because the HLN Dead Wife Club show is so compelling, some of you have written me and have asked whether or not I've changed my opinion on Natalie Wood's death, whether or not I think that Robert Wagner should be held civilly or criminally responsible for what happened to Natalie Wood. And my answer is that my opinion is unchanged. I'm going to disagree with the tone and tenor of the Dead Wives Club show. I don't believe we have enough, apart from just speculation, to even consider pointing the finger at Robert Wagner in this case. Now let's go back to November of 1981 to the boat called the Splendor. Four people are on it. The operator, Dennis Deverne, who is the star of Dead Wives Club. Right? This is his coming out party. He's questioned extensively on that show. Right? Dennis Deverne is the operator. On the boat is Natalie Wood. She's 43 years old. She has a husband who's a little bit older. Robert Wagner, who's also on the boat, is 51 years old. And the fourth person on the boat is 38-year-old Christopher Walken. Now, one of the folklores, we'll call it, from this case is the idea that Christopher Walken was a young up-and-comer in Hollywood. Maybe he decided to not point the finger at anyone because he was interested in his career and he understood that, you know, uh, stepping on any toes of any people who uh, were more established in the Hollywood hierarchy might actually result in his career being stalled or thwarted in some way, shape, or form. Right? So the idea is that Christopher Walken has stayed silent, relatively silent, all these years, hasn't talked about what he saw on the boat, hasn't pointed a finger at who he believes is responsible for Natalie Wood's death. That is folklore, folks. Understand, Christopher Walken, when he steps on the Splendor, 
has already won an Oscar. He's not in his late 20s, he's in his late 30s. Deer Hunter is one of the most culturally relevant and significant films of the 1970s. Walk-In is already an accomplished actor. Understand, I know Natalie Wood had been around a lot longer than Walk-In. I understand Natalie Wood was much more well-known than Walk-In. But Natalie Wood is only five years older than Walk-In when they're on the boat. Well, let's talk about the differing versions of events. Now, people need to realize that Robert Wagner claims that he's in a room arguing with Christopher Walken. He admits to the argument. He's arguing with Christopher Walken. Natalie Wood is in that room with them. Robert Wagner, who went by RJ, claims that during his argument with Walken, Natalie Wood leaves, goes to the bedroom, shuts the door behind her. According to Wagner, that's the last time he sees his wife alive. Right now, that's Wagner's version of events. He's arguing with Christopher Walken. His wife leaves the room. That's the last he sees of her. Now, DeVern has added some wrinkles. Apparently, a bottle, either a wine bottle or a champagne bottle, is shattered during Wagner's argument with Christopher Walken. Deverne also claims that Wagner accused Walken of either having slept or wanting to sleep with his wife. If you take a step back, you might ask yourself, wow, this situation happened right around Thanksgiving of 1981. Wouldn't this celebrity couple have wanted to have been alone? Isn't there one person too many on the boat? You have the operator, Dennis Deverne. Okay, you're a couple, you have a boat, you hire an operator. All right, what's Christopher Walken? Natalie Wood's co-star in a movie they were working on, Brainstorm, even doing on the boat. Isn't this like inviting a stranger to be with your family while you're opening up your Christmas gifts. Right, walk-in seems to be the one person too many on the boat. Maybe Wagner was accusatory. Maybe Wagner wasn't on his best behavior. The show does an excellent job of trying to show us a different part of Wagner's personality. Understand, this is the second time Wagner has been married to Natalie Wood. The two of them didn't get along that well the first time they were married. According to reports, according to Wagner's own biography, which he narrated, Natalie Wood, after leaving him, ends up with Warren Beatty, her, star in, her co-star in Splendor in the Grass. Right? What the show does is they actually take the portion of Wagner's oral biography where Wagner says that he wanted to kill Beatty. That he actually started hanging out by Beatty's house. That he was lying in wait, hoping that Beatty would come out of the house so he could do something awful to Beatty. 
right? They play that on Dead Wives Club. I believe to leave the viewer with the impression that Wagner was the kind of guy who was prepared to kill people who he felt had done him wrong. Okay. Okay. Maybe Wagner has a temper on him. I'll even concede that. Now, Wagner's version is that he's arguing with Walken. Might have even accused him of being with his wife. When his wife leaves the room, she's had enough. Everyone has been drinking. Deverne's version of events differs somewhat, as you could imagine. He claims that that's not the last time Wagner saw his wife. He claims that Wagner's on the back of the boat with his wife later and that they're having a heated argument. Right? He can hear it from inside the boat. It's heated. It's not a love fest. They're going at it. Then, and I believe this is very important, Deverne claims that it just goes quiet. In other words, couple is having a heated argument. They're loud. Then suddenly it goes quiet. He claims that the next time he sees RJ, RJ re-enters the boat. RJ tells him that Natalie is missing. Go look for her. So DeVern then claims that he decides to look for Natalie Wood. He does as he's told. He goes on the back of the boat and he notices the dinghy is gone. Right? What DeVern sees is consistent with Natalie Wood having left on the dinghy. Right? Well, draw your own inferences. On Dead Wives Club, it's obvious that the last person to see Natalie Wood alive is Robert Wagner. If you believe that the last place he saw Natalie Wood alive was on the back of the boat, right? Then he's lying to the police. Why would he lie to the police? And he would be the person who would know how Natalie got in the dinghy. Also, if they were arguing and then suddenly there's silence, well, what would cause the sudden silence? Sounds like something happened to Natalie. So as you're watching Dead Wise Club, you're thinking, my goodness, Robert Wagner wanted to kill Warren Beatty? Wright says so in his own words. In his book slash oral book, the audio version of his book. Then he is in an argument with Chris Walken. He later is on the back of the boat with Natalie, must have accused her of being involved with Christopher Walken. Right? We know that emotions were raised to the point where there's a broken bottle on the boat. There's a sudden silence. It sounds like something happened to Natalie, who was with her, Robert Wagner. He must have done something to her. Doesn't sound, given that the volume suddenly goes silent, according to Dennis DeVerne, that Natalie just casually hopped on the dinghy and said, I'm getting out of here, and then left. Also, we know from Natalie herself, they're filmed interviews, they play a video of Natalie Wood talking about her fear of water. 
right? If she's drunk and if she's just wearing a down type jacket over pajamas and no underwear underneath and it's dark at night and you're out in the water where it's a little bit cold it's November even in California November is cold why would she then decide to take the dinghy isn't she the kind of person who like RJ actually hired a boat operator she doesn't want to be on a dinghy herself certainly not late at night with nowhere to go dressed like that so as you watch Dead Wives Club you're thinking my goodness RJ looks guilty as sin doesn't he why should I believe him and not Dennis Deverne who was also on the boat well folks Deverne's problem Deverne's version of events in my opinion has problems it has holes I would argue that it has so many holes that there isn't enough here to point the finger at Robert Wagner first understand that Natalie Wood dies in 1981 you remember 1981 Ronald Reagan was president of the United States right um, we didn't have an internet that consumers used we didn't have cell phones that were used by consumers we're still years away from people carrying around mobile phones that look like suitcases well understand it is not until 2011 they admit this on the show 2011 30 years later decades later that Dennis Deverne claim that he heard a fight between Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood on the back of the boat that night yeah that fact the most important fact in Dennis Deverne's version of events doesn't show up for 30 years 30 years understand Dennis back in 1981 talked with law enforcement he talked with the investigators he gave them a version of events so understand we know Dennis Deverne is lying he wants you to believe his current version of events not the version he gave to law enforcement now if he knew Natalie Wood, if Natalie was a friend, right, and Deverne was the boat's operator for many other trips, if he had any empathy toward Natalie Wood, why wouldn't he cooperate with law enforcement and give them the version of events that he wants us to believe now, several decades later? why didn't his current version of events appear for 30 years right so in my opinion Dennis Deverne's changing version of events is troubling we can make a show in 2019 with him giving a different version of events than he gave in 1981 and that show can be entertaining the question is whether a show that relies on a new version of events being told by a guy decades later is credible I don't believe it is credible I'll even go further I don't know how anyone could look at Deverne's inconsistency 
could look at his changing version of events and the timeline, his 1981 version, which he sticks to for years, then his 2011 version. I don't know how an observer could look at all that and come close to an opinion that's beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, let's continue. So given that DeVern's version of events has changed radically over the years, right? He doesn't tell law enforcement. They were on the back of the boat having a big argument. Then there was silence. He doesn't say that. And that's the core of his new story. So given his inconsistency, we have to look back to 1981, to his actions on the night Natalie goes missing. Are his actions consistent with his new story? Now understand, the night Natalie goes missing, the Vern, who supposedly has just heard a big argument and then silence, isn't the one who reports that Natalie's missing. Right? He doesn't report Natalie's being missing. Isn't that suspicious to you? Isn't that odd? Natalie, a person he knows, is in an argument and then suddenly there's silence. She's never seen alive again or heard from again, according to DeVern. But yet he doesn't report it. You know who reports it? Robert Wagner. If DeVern's current version of events is true, why didn't he report that Natalie was missing in 1981? Why not? He's on the boat. Didn't he hear her? Didn't he suddenly realize that things had gone silent? To me, DeVern's actions in 1981 make his current version even less credible. Well, let's continue. There's another person on the boat. It's DeVern, Wood, Wagner, and Chris Walken. Now just understand, Christopher Walken has never publicly supported DeVern's version of events. Never. So the show, Dead Wives Club, has a problem. You have someone on the boat who has never publicly supported DeVern. So what the show does, and it's slickness at its best, the show claims that Walken talked with investigators recently and supposedly gave them valuable information. Well, let's go beyond the show. We have access to the internet now, don't we? We can actually research what Walken has said over the years. As you can imagine, Walken at times makes a movie, then gets questioned as part of the press tour for the movie. Well, what I want people to do is I want people to Google the following phrase. What Christopher Walken said about Natalie Wood's death, open parentheses, E.T. flashback exclusive, close parentheses. The E.T. stands for Entertainment Tonight. Right, it's a piece written by Joe Bergen, B-E-R-G-E-N. Now what I'm going to do is to just tell you what Walken said to Joe Bergen. You can reach your own conclusion on whether or not this supports Dennis DeVern's new version of events. 
right? Walken, when asked about Natalie Wood, said they handled it in the only way they could. It was a shocking thing, right? So then the piece continues. Upon being asked whether the real story about Wood's death has come out, Walken responded, and here's the quote, the real story of her death is that she drowned and nobody knows how she drowned or what happened except her. That's what it is. There is no real story. No one, excuse me, nobody will ever know. Well, let me just say, Walken's version seems to differ significantly from Deverne's version. Walken's version doesn't seem to involve an argument between RJ and Natalie that suddenly involves silence. Let me say this too. On the show Dead Wives Club, they hint at people on other boats, right? Who heard yelling that night. Yelling that might support Deverne's new version of events. That RJ and Natalie were on the back of their boat yelling at each other. But understand, the presence of other boats, in my opinion, makes it less likely that that took place. Robert Wagner, according to reports, was very image conscious. Right? They have a little snippet of Wagner talking to Larry King on the show and you can tell that he's guarded. He's very conscientious of how this paints the people involved in what happened that night. I just have a very hard time believing that Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood are so loud on the back of the boat that people on other boats heard them but Christopher Walken on the boat did not. Right, Dennis DeVern on the boat in the interior of the boat heard them. Christopher Walken has never made a statement claiming that he heard Natalie and Robert Wagner on the back of the boat being loud and then there being a silence. And so for me to believe that they're so loud that people on other boats are hearing them. Also that Wagner, who is very image conscious, suddenly decides right around Thanksgiving of 1981 to get loud with his wife knowing that there are two other people on the boat with him and that there are other boats around them that could hear him screaming at his wife really out in a semi-public type of setting if you believe that there are boats around with multiple people hearing the screaming I, I just don't believe that happens I just don't believe it happened here I also have a hard time with the idea that Christopher Walken, who by all reports barely knew Robert Wagner, right? He's on the boat because he's a co-star in a movie with Natalie Wood. I just don't believe that Christopher Walken would suddenly develop a disloyalty for finding Natalie's murder, murderer, and a loyalty toward Robert Wagner where he would protect Robert Wagner. He certainly didn't need Robert Wagner for his career, right? This is the first movie he did with Natalie Wood. 
right? Robert Wagner never won an Oscar. Walken has already gotten accolades that Wagner hasn't had. So I just don't believe that Walken would try to protect Wagner after Wagner killed his wife. Let's say Walken was involved with Natalie Wood. Let's speculate here. And there's no evidence to support that. But let's say Walken was involved with Natalie Wood. If he knew he was involved with Natalie and then she went missing after he hears Natalie in a pitched argument with Robert Wagner on the back of the boat, I think he would have reported it. I think when he spoke with investigators, he would have said simply, look, they were arguing on the back of the boat. I think his allegiance would have been with the woman he was involved with. The woman who asked him to be on the boat. Not with the husband who he would know was a jealous husband who killed her. Well, let's continue. Let me say, too, that on the show, they do an excellent job. And this is Dead Wives Club on HLN. Right? On the show, they do an excellent job of going over Natalie Wood's autopsy. They quote the coroner. And they talk about how Natalie Wood had a lot of markings on her legs. Her legs look battered, folks. Looks like she's been in a tussle. Make no mistake about it. Understand it was the coroner's belief that Natalie Wood slipped and fell as she was getting on the dinghy. Her legs are that marked up. Well, understand that argument cuts two ways. I would argue that that argument actually exonerates Robert Wagner. Understand, Deverne hears yelling, right? Deverne hears a married couple having a heated argument on the back of the boat. What Deverne doesn't hear is a physical scuffle. For Natalie Wood to have those markings on her leg and for those markings to have been caused by her husband would have required a physical confrontation between the two. In other words, they're not just arguing on the back of the boat. Things then get physical. Robert Wagner would have had to have kicked her several times in the legs and done things to create that bruising. In other words, the bruising requires more than a verbal argument on the back of the boat. There wouldn't just be silence after an argument as Deverne is claiming. There'd be more than that. Right? The inference is that there's a physical scuffle. Nobody on the other boats hears a physical scuffle. And then Wagner would have had to have tossed her on the dinghy. Right? Physically dominated her. Forced her onto the dinghy. Then let the dinghy loose. Understand, too, if you're going to go the physical scuffle route, then when Wagner is talking with police later, right, when the police are investigating, 
you would imagine that Wagner would have bruises on him. If there's a physical scuffle where he is subduing Natalie Wood, giving her the injuries on her legs that show up in the autopsy report, then doesn't that increase the likelihood that Robert Wagner himself would have injuries on him, that there would be some bruising someplace? Well, understand there's someone who saw Robert Wagner right after he's on supposedly the back of the boat with Natalie Wood. And that is Dennis Deverne. Right? The two men sit down after Deverne looks for Natalie, can't find her. The two men sit down and the two men have scotch. Robert Wagner's not tending to himself. Deverne doesn't notice any cuts on Robert Wagner. If Robert Wagner was supposed to have given Natalie Wood the wounds to her face and to her legs, wouldn't he have some wounds? Wouldn't the back of the boat have things that needed to be cleaned up? Wouldn't the back of the boat show some evidence of a scuffle between the two of them? Wouldn't Walken and Avern on the boat have heard the scuffle? So I have a problem with the idea that the autopsy, the injuries to Natalie's legs, were caused by Robert Wagner on the back of the boat as he's having an argument with Natalie, or after his argument with Natalie. If you follow the theory here, when he subdues Natalie and puts her on the dinghy and then lets the dinghy go free. Or maybe he beats up Natalie, badly hurts her, throws her in the water, and then loosens the dinghy to make it look like she took the dinghy. Maybe she's clinging to the dinghy. Right? All I'm saying here is the physical evidence doesn't add up. Wagner doesn't show that he's been in that kind of a struggle. Also, the audio evidence doesn't add up. Deverne hears a pitched argument and then silence. Deverne doesn't hear a slap, a punch. Deverne, who hears the argument, doesn't claim that he heard Natalie say, Stop hitting me! or anything of the kind. There isn't the physical evidence on the boat that shows that a scuffle took place on the boat. Right? There's nothing to support the idea, forensically, that it's Robert Wagner who caused the wounds to Natalie Wood's legs. Right? So, let me just say, what you have here is a situation where only one person on the boat claims that Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner were having a pitched argument on the back of the boat. And that person doesn't make that claim for 30 years. Right? That version of events doesn't appear until 2011. And even that version of events seems to be completely inconsistent with Deverne's actions the night Natalie goes missing. Right? Robert Wagner's on the back of the boat with Natalie Wood. Then there's silence. Then Wagner tells Deverne his wife is missing. Go look for her. Right? And Deverne doesn't report it to anyone. At that point, wouldn't Deverne have thought, gee, I heard them arguing on the back of the boat, then there's silence, now she's missing. 
Maybe this guy caused her to go missing. Wouldn't the Vern at that point say, wow, I need to protect Natalie? Right? The Vern supposedly knew that Natalie was afraid of water. So wouldn't he understand that the situation was highly unusual at that moment? But in the moment, Deverne doesn't report Natalie missing. Then, of course, what does Deverne do after he's unable to locate Natalie? He sits down with RJ and drinks scotch. That's in the moment. That's in 1981. So in 2011, we suddenly get a different version of events. But that version has the problems of what happened in 1981, right? Walken doesn't support that version of events. Deverne's actions the night Natalie goes missing doesn't support that version of events. Then we start hearing from the autopsy that Natalie had leg injuries. Natalie had facial injuries. Right? People think she may have fallen as she tried to get into the dinghy. May have scraped up her legs then. May have hit her head then. Right? Well, now we want to claim that maybe she was hit by Robert Wagner. How come the people around the boat didn't hear a scuffle? How come Deverne in the boat didn't hear a scuffle? How come Deverne, when he's drinking scotch with Robert Wagner, doesn't see Wagner with a black eye or a scrape or anything like that? Right? To me, there simply is not enough here to pin Natalie Wood's death on, on Robert Wagner. There is a distinct possibility. Distinct possibility. This is as plausible as anything else. That the last time Robert Wagner saw his wife was when she left the room in which Wagner was arguing with Christopher Walken. Understand a simple statement by Walken to the police that he heard their argument on the back of the boat would contradict Robert Wagner's version of events. Also, if Natalie's injured that night, any police photographs of injuries on RJ would hint that there was a physical altercation between the two of them. We don't have any of that. We simply don't have enough evidence. That's how I see it. If you feel that I have misrepresented any portion of Dead Wives Club, if you feel that there are facts I'm overlooking here that would tilt the balance in favor of one explanation or a different explanation, then I hope you leave those comments in the comment section of this video. Right? Let's take a deeper look at this case. Right? Let's try to figure out which facts are relevant and which facts told 30 years later are questionable. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by. I look forward to your comments. Thanks.